I've had many sketchbooks throughout my life and every time I get a new one, I forget about my old ones and say to myself, I'll be sure to finish this one. Yeah, this one is, is special, I'm going to completely fill it with amazing artwork. Every page is going to be awesome, but then the inevitable happens. I stop drawing in that sketchbook as well, and then it gets tossed onto the pile of old sketchbooks that have also been abandoned. The sketchbooks where only the first 5 to 10 pages are drawn on. I always tell myself that I'll come back to them later, but that day never comes. Again, a few pages in, this was abandoned. Some time went by, and I purchased a new sketchbook an A4 one, and I decided to start a new series of videos on the channel called Sketchbook 100, and in each of these videos, I'd set out to fill each page in the hopes of gradually filling the entire sketchbook, but again, a few pages in, this was abandoned. And so, Sketchbook 100, this new series, came to an end. Now these are the two sketchbooks that I have lying around my studio, one at size A5 and one at size A4, and you can see how I approached each of them. I always find myself creating these detailed full page drawings, drawings that take hours to finish, and to fill an entire sketchbook doing this is a, a huge task and as the saying goes, perhaps I bit off more than I can chew. So I, I recognise this as a problem. Each time I look at these sketchbooks, it reminds me of my failure to finish them. And I don't like leaving things unfinished, so what should I do about it? A simple answer would be to start drawing in this A4 sketchbook again and continue what I started, but as I said, it takes a very long time to create these drawings, especially at this size, and when I think about it, if I'm going to create a drawing at this scale with this much detail, then I think I'd prefer to draw on some separate paper, some high quality Bristol board, and then it's not imprisoned in a sketchbook, I can do what I will with it, and I think that's more suitable for those drawings. And so that brings me to this sketchbook at size A5, half the size of the other one. And the drawings that I've already created in here are of course very detailed and they still take a lot of time to create, but they are more manageable. I mean it's 50% smaller, so attempting to finish this sketchbook is a more realistic task. I also avoid the risk of getting bored of a drawing midway through and starting a new one. That's uh, another issue for another day. So, here is my A5 sketchbook that I will attempt to finish. Sorry, A4 sketchbook, maybe I'll come back to you one day. So this sketchbook is back in action and I'm creating a new drawing here. Now from looking at the existing drawings on the earlier pages, you can see that I had a habit of filling the page and so moving forward, I'll continue to do that. A lot of these decisions come down to my own personal preference. Now, if you are familiar with my work, you'll be aware that I like to draw buildings, and these buildings that I draw are not your fancy, modern, new-looking buildings. They are more so run-down, dystopian-looking buildings. In fact, a lot of the environments that I draw are heavily inspired by very dense cities such as Hong Kong and Tokyo. I've been fortunate enough to visit both of these places, and the experience definitely had an influence on my work. Because of the subjects being drawn, the images I produce are similar to the images that might fall into the cyberpunk subgenre of science fiction. Anyways, here on screen you can see how I'm approaching this one. Naturally, many of the drawings in this book will be similar in style because how I enjoy to work hasn't changed much. I really like getting up close to the drawing and putting in a lot of detail, which of course is subjective. I mean, I receive a lot of feedback on my work from putting it online like this, and it's clear that some people are not a fan of such details that can be overwhelming, and some people really appreciate it. I, for one, enjoy looking at a busy image. I find it to be more entertaining for the eye. It's fun to look around and pick out the things that might have gone unnoticed at first glance. 
I had shown some of Jeff Darrow's work in a previous video and his work is also very detailed to the extent where without colour it can be hard to understand what you are looking at but I mentioned in that video that you can tell that he gets lost in his drawings and that's the, the same experience that I have when I draw like this. Each mark that I place down is intentional and each section has something to look at. Here you can see how I'm just finishing up drawing this cat-like structure on top of this building and I'd like to say that I made this up myself but I actually found a model of this online and I really liked the look of it so I have to give credit to the artist and I've tweaked this a little bit to be more suitable for the image that I'm drawing here. I've added it on top of the building that I was drawing and then also I've drawn some scaffolding around it along with some people who are... I don't know, perhaps they are pa painting it or repairing the statue. Anyways, as I work my way down, I start to extend out a section of the building. And this is what I mean about each area of the drawing, including something to look at. I'm drawing a sofa and a TV on the ground outside. It's funny to imagine someone sat on top of this building watching TV. And then around here, there's a neon sign to the side of the building and a fallen down section of the fence, making it appear as if whoever was up here had removed a section of the fence so that they could climb down. Hopefully, they didn't fall off. Now, if you are familiar with the format of my old sketchbook videos, you'll be aware that I tend to stop talking at times to let the drawing footage play on screen. I enjoy discussing the process and the intention behind what I'm doing here, but sometimes it's nice to just watch the artwork come together without the commentary, so I'll let this play for a moment. So I'm drawing a lot of the buildings in the background now and as I do this I have to consider the perspective that's why you'll often see me use the ruler to draw some guidelines for the windows. I'm just improvising here as I draw this out and again as I draw this I try to keep it simple and have it placed correctly in perspective.
I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the image but I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out and I think drawing these at a smaller size, being A5, is a, a good idea. Here I'm working over the entire image again, developing what I've previously drawn. So that concludes this drawing, I'm happy to be working in this sketchbook again. I do intend on eventually filling this sketchbook but I'm aware that that is a, a big task and one that will take a long time but if there's one thing that I do have it's time so hopefully you enjoyed this thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one if you enjoyed the content I create then do consider becoming a patron on patreon you will gain access to exclusive tutorials study documents process papers real-time drawing footage and more plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way other than that thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon